All right, let's get things going and create our first transition. Press Ctrl or Command N and write down a name for the composition. I'll write T1 the corner. This actually sounds a lot more deadly than it actually is. 30 frames per second, maybe with the duration, make it 4 seconds long. Ok, we have our new composition to work on. We will be here a little bit nerdy, so please select Ctrl or Command R to open up the rulers and you won't place a ruler on the left bottom corner. So I'll select this, come really close to the composition, just leave a little space here in between them and make the first ruler. I can press space to navigate here and I also take a ruler to make a horizontal line. Now I also leave a little space here so the corner is just beyond the original composition, maybe even a bit more, just for fun, and our beautiful workspace is prepared. Now I'll zoom out with the scroll wheel because I'll make really big rectangles here. Select the rectangle tool and make a really big big rectangle, something like that, it will automatically snap to the borders we prepared. Now as you have the rectangle with a beautiful color, maybe make it something different than that, or if you want, stay with a purplish pinkish color, it's completely up to you. Now once you draw this rectangle, you see this little object here. This is called an anchor point and the shape will transform towards this point. Now I want to change this point to be exactly in this corner, in this spot. For that I need to select the pen behind tool. You can press Y on your keyboard to make it visible. And now you must be very careful here because the rectangle itself has its own anchor point and the shape has its own anchor point. Once I select the rectangle here, the rectangle pad I have this anchor point and once I select the shape layer I have this anchor point. This time I'll not use the rectangle, I'll use the shape, so click on the shape, press on the pen behind tool, click and it should perfectly snap to this position as well. Now we can start to work on our transition. I press on the shape layer and I press R to open up the rotation. Now I will place a keyframe at the beginning where we start. I go one second forward, exactly to the first second, and this is where my transition should be visible at 90 degrees. So I'll click here, press 90, and make it stay like that. Now the reason we wanted to make this rectangle so big, because as we transition out, we will rotate it, it even more, and if it would be too small, it would be visible in this corner that this rectangle is too small. Since we made it so big, it will be no problem, we have the 90 degrees and everything is working fine. Now I will select my playhead and press page down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times to go 5 frames forward. Or maybe even 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 frames more, 10 frames spare time should be okay. You can also make this with shift. By pressing shift it will go 10 frames forward automatically. Now I will place another keyframe here, go to right about 2 seconds and make it 180 degrees. So the transition will be looking as follows. It will come in, stay for a few frames and then it will transition out. Now I want to select those keyframes and go inside of the graph editor to ease this animation a little bit because right now this is a very static animation. It goes with the same speed along the entire animation. I select all 4 keyframes and press this little button to ease them in. Now you see the motion is a little bit eased, it starts slower and then it goes faster but I want an even stronger movement. Let me select the speed graph and this shows me how many degrees will fall in a second. I select the first two keyframes, now I'll pull the left handle, pull the right handle and I have a different motion. I'll do the same for the second keyframes, I make it start a little bit quicker and then slowly fade off. Now let's preview the animation itself by hitting the spacebar here. It's just a little bit nicer, so now what we have to do is to duplicate this layer four times. One, two, three, four times pressed on Ctrl D, or maybe three times will be enough, and I will stagger those layers. By having this layer selected and pressing page up, page down, I am moving the playhead. But if I will hold my left Alt key, I'll move the entire layer. So I want the first layer to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 frames forward. 
I deselect everything. With Shift key, I select the last two. One, two, three, four, five. Now I can select the last. One, two, three, four, five. I have a bit of a staggered animation here. As I press U, I can see it. Now I need to change, of course, the colors. And this will be completely up to you. Select the layers, change their color, for example, to something like that. Then I will go maybe something yellow because it's really dark in here. Yellow and something friendly for the last layer. Let me check out. Well, we have blue. We can stay with green. Okay, this animation should look cool. Let me preview it. Well, we are almost done. Now, what's the problem here? The animation goes in. Now the other layers are fading off and the green is fading as the last, but the green should stay here and the other should transition out. So I select all the last keyframes here, this last, this last, this last, and I need to move them five frames forward. One, two, three, four, five. If I want to be exactly like this. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Shift key, deselect the two, going forward. Shift key, deselecting, one, two, three, four, five. I make a nice pyramid here. Let me preview it. Boom. And boom. It goes really properly. Eventually, if you don't like the motion, you can do some tricks like selecting all those keyframes, pressing the left alt key and shifting those keyframes. You see they shift accordingly to this and this will create just a little bit more interesting motion. You can also select the first keyframes and do something like that by holding the alt key. I didn't select this one, sorry. To stagger them just a little bit in a more interesting way. Now let's preview the motion if this looks okay. Well, actually the first one look a bit worse, so I just go Ctrl Z. I like the end animation, but I didn't like this staggering, so let me preview it once again. This looks fairly okay. I believe we are nearly done with this transition. If you don't want to make it as flat as here, press Ctrl or Command 5 to open up the effects and presets, or go to Window, Effects and Presets, and just select a drop shadow. Press a drop shadow, place it into the first layer and we see a little shadow here. Let me deselect this option so the selection won't be in the view. I have something like that and if the quality is too low, remember for preview purposes select here to full quality. Now it's rendered full quality and I see this shadow is very strong. I don't need it like this, maybe a bigger distance like 8 to make it bigger but much much softer soft like this, something around here, I have maybe 90 here, 90 will be okay, and definitely a little bit less opacity. Let me make the opacity to 30%, the direction is alright, it should be okay. Now I can just Ctrl C this drop shadow, Shift select all layers and Ctrl V. As I press E, like effect, you will see all layers have a drop shadow and it gives me a bit of depth between those layers. So I have the first transition prepared like this. Boom. It renders a bit longer because I have full quality selected and I have a drop shadow effect. It stays a few seconds and it starts to fade away. I believe we are done with our first transition here. As we will package everything together, we will add color controls and some other useful stuff. But for the beginning, the transition one, the corner, will stay like this. Thank you very much for your attention, I hope you followed along and you are also ready with your first transition. If not, open up After Effects and start working, you will be ready in a few minutes. See you then!